Salaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the brand new AirPods Pro. These guys were announced recently and obviously for pre-orders started to ship out right away and you should be able to pick them up pretty soon. The main thing is these were designed to work with iPhones. This is designed by Apple for iPhones and they work the best with iPhones. But I don't use an iPhone on a daily basis, so how do they actually work with the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus? Uh, am I able to still get a uh, Dolby configuration on this and am I able to still use them and get all the functionality? specifically since these feature active noise cancelling. So this is TK, this is the AirPods Pro, and this is the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Let's see how this relationship is going to work. Like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you're always notified whenever we have new videos on the channel. So as I mentioned to you guys in the beginning, these AirPods Pro are designed to work with an iPhone and they're basically going to work best with an iPhone and they work great. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and look at basically some of the things that we gain and lose by going over to Android and using these headphones. Does active noise cancelling still work? Uh, do we still get great audio? Are we still getting the range? Answering, picking up calls, uh, skipping tracks, start and play pause, all the functionalities that we normally are expected to use on an iPhone, are they still present on an Android? So first and foremost, let's see what comes in the box. We'll go ahead and pick up the top. Uh, first, obviously designed by Apple in California. We pick it up. We get the AirPods sitting here, right there, present for us. We have some instruction manuals, some you know logistical papers, nothing big. We'll keep this one on the side because we're going to come back to this in a few seconds. And then of course, here are the AirPods themselves. Uh, the rest of the box is pretty simple. They provide us a lightning to USB-C cable. Really nice, especially for MacBook Pro users or even actually most users. And one of the other things they also provide us is the additional tips here so that you can actually configure it to your ear so you have the best seal. Uh, by default, they have the medium ones and of course you can actually replace them with either the large or the small ear tips. But as you can imagine, the AirPods themselves are actually quite small as far as the case. Uh, actually, I just opened it up. So you'll notice the green light is there. This is basically to actually start pairing. Uh, the case itself is very nice and very flush. Let's go ahead and compare it to the uh, Samsung Galaxy Buds. Now I've been using these as daily drivers for some time. There's a lot of similarities in here, um, except for the fact that obviously the price point is quite different. And we also have ANC, active noise cancellation here, where we don't have it here on the AirBuds. So what we have here essentially is just a comparison in size. You'll notice it's actually a little bit uh, thinner, not as wide. And of course, also on the thickness is actually not bad. So in, in all in all, this is actually a smaller container and of course uses a lightning connector. Now, both have wireless charging, which is really nice and both use their own standards. So this uses USB-C for Android and of course this uses lightning for Apple devices, as well as the fact that you can charge it. You're opening up the case, the green light turns on, starting to connect to the last device you connect it to. And if they're not, they'll start pairing with any iPhone with the normal configuration. And what I mean by that, that if I decide to open them up next to an iPhone, and if iPhone is not paired to it, you'll notice that it automatically connects. It named them, it's called TK's AirPods, telling me the battery level for both the case and the earphones. And I can actually use them the way they're intended. They're again, intended to use with actually an iPhone. Now, going into the control center, you'll notice that once you actually have them connected, you'll start seeing that there is basically a picture of them. So since the sound is actually going through them, you're able to control the noise cancellation off or transparency. Transparency allows the sound from the outside to come in and you can switch between the three different options. It is a little bit of jarring uh, effect when you're doing it when you're talking because it changes the way you're, you're hearing yourself. Uh, but other than that, I think it's overall very nice and very simple to configure. You can still go into the settings and go into Bluetooth. And then of course, TK's AirPods Pro, uh, you can rename them, of course, you can change those uh, three options, left and right controls. And of course, ear tips uh, fit test, it'll test itself to see to make sure that you actually have uh, basically a good fit for the for noise cancellation and adjust. Microphone is automatic and of course, um, automatic ear detection, basically the moment you put them in your ear, it starts recognizing it on the device. So that you're just opening the box, doesn't automatically take the audio away from your phone. Uh, but that's again, the way they're intended to be used. They're supposed to be used on Android, I'm uh, sorry, on an iOS device, specifically an iPhone. Now this is the eight plus, this is obviously not the latest iPhone. So as long as you're running the latest version of software, you should be able to basically enjoy using your AirPods Pro uh, without any problem. Now let's go ahead and switch over to Android. So what I'm going to do first and foremost, obviously is disable Bluetooth so that these pair, these headphones don't try to pair back with this device. So at this point, put them back in the case. And just as a heads up, as far as a quick tour of the case, lightning connector on the back, uh, there is wireless charging on the back and there's also a pairing button to initiate pairing. So if I want to pair them to, let's say a new device, I open it up, press and hold the button in the back till this green light starts flashing white. And at that point, it's ready to pair with any device. It doesn't have to be an iPhone device. It could be with an Android device. As long as it has Bluetooth, they will work to a certain point. 
Today, obviously here, even with the Bluetooth off, it recognized that the AirPods were in the area. I'm gonna go ahead and close it. Now, again, on my Android device, I'll go ahead and open up the AirPods. As you can see, they paired connected right away. So essentially, I have them paired to two different devices and whichever one has Bluetooth on at the time I'm opening up the box, they should connect to and work perfectly. But one thing I do wanna share with you guys is that we don't have the same controls. We don't have even a way of seeing the battery level. So that's the first thing we need to be aware of. We don't have a way of seeing the battery level, but keep in mind that you should still be able to use them for quite some time. And if the battery does run low, they do actually start making a beep. So it's not a big issue. You can always put them back in the case and still be able to use them. Uh, but overall, for the, for the most part, right now we're using them the way they are intended. They are a Bluetooth pair of headphones. We can start playing music and listening to music. And one of the other thing is, as you notice right there, there is that little trigger area on, the, on each AirPod. And those are the actual trigger parts that enables us to do the gestures. There's no actual swiping. They're basically a button press and it's hard to kind of tell, but you hear it whenever it's in your ear. Looking over that little instruction booklet, the one I left after we opened up the box, we have a few options here. We have pause, which is basically playing pause, normal, and this also works for answering and hanging up calls if you're receiving a call. And as you notice, it's basically triggered. Now this will work on any of the ear pods. It doesn't actually, doesn't matter if it's the right one or the left one. So if you're using it in single mode, all of this will work. Uh, double press skips forward, triple press goes back. Now, as you notice, the last option here is supposed to also have the ability of listening to Hey Siri. Now, I don't have that running, obviously, and it, does, it will not work on an Android device since we don't have that assistant. And if you want to use your assistant on the Android side, just make sure that it's active on your phone with the Hey, you know, the name of that company. I'm not going to say it to initiate your assistant now. Uh, but looking on the right side is where it gets interesting. The ability of turning on ANC, active noise cancellation, on or off is by doing a lawn press. And that's really nice. Now we lose the ability of turning it off, meaning going that middle setting, which we normally have with the iPhone. Now we only have basically the ability of turning on ANC or keeping it off and or going into transparency mode. And those are the really the two options that I really like using. I went ahead and put in the AirPods. Uh, they're smaller than the ones before. They don't hang as far and they kind of look like they're almost curling in. And for me, they just fit very nicely with the default ear tips. Uh, again, if you want to have a better fit and they're not fitting very well, definitely move up to the either bigger ones or the smaller one. Now, as you can see here, I have my phone. I'm just trying to mirror it for you so you guys can see the active functionality. I'm going to go ahead and press once. Music started. You can see it. It in. Double press. Skip forward. Triple press. Uh, we went back to the other track and I'll go ahead and press once and it just stops. So all of those functions work great. Again, they're touch sensitive. There's no command, no vocal configuration there. And of course, active noise cancellation works by just pressing and holding. And you get that same chirp and <laughs> you have to kind of adjust to it because you're starting your volume changes when you go from active noise cancellation to transparency mode. Now, the one thing I would say is with transparency mode, it just works so well that it sounds like I almost I'm hearing the regular sound in the room that there is nothing in my ear blocking the sound. Normally with in-ear uh, headphones, there's always by default because of the seal it creates within your ear canal, there's always a default reduction in noise. Transparency basically cancels that out and it sounds like I'm talking to you guys normally. You guys can tell me obviously in the description below or in the comments below if I sound very different to you guys obviously since I'm using these. But turning back on again, you get the same thing. You press and hold and you get that same chirp and all of a sudden everything just calms down a little bit just basically the cancellation turns on but let's go ahead and recap and see what actually works what doesn't work uh the headphones work great uh, as far as actual call quality i've tried it at different times about four different calls and the audio quality is so good that the other person on the other end did not even know that i was talking to them on a pair of headphones they thought i was actually talking on the phone uh, the active noise cancellation works great uh, not necessarily having the off option that's that middle option between um, active noise cancellation off and then we have transparency mode um, actually i feel like it's not a problem because i think for the most part if you're buying these headphones and not buying let's say the airpods uh, 2 uh, you want to keep in mind that you want to have active noise cancellation and when you turn it off and turn off a uh, the transparency mode it literally sounds like you don't have headphones in. So that's something that's very different and very unique. The fit is very nice, they're very light. What we lose on the Android obviously is all of the functionalities we had under the Bluetooth tab. And what I mean by that is the ability to basically uh, see basically the battery level as well as doing that ear fit test to see if the noise cancellation is working correctly. Android works great uh, on my Samsung device as you saw with the Note 10 Plus, I'm able to enjoy using it. I have Dolby Atmos configuration on there as well. I also have a great range on this. I use this phone from one side of my house all the way to the other side of the house and I had like three different walls between me and the phone and it still worked 
and the button gesture still worked very, very nicely. All in all, the experience between using them on Android and iOS is going to work pretty much the same. Now, if you're using them with a Samsung Galaxy, a device, let's say an S10 or a Note 10 that does feature reverse power share, or even using them on a Huawei device that obviously has the ability of sharing power using the wireless charging, these are going to have that little bit of an edge being used on Android than they are by being used on iOS. So that's something that we can't really say that basically iPhone can do yet. Maybe in the iPhone 12, we'll be able to see that. Uh, let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of the AirPods Pro? Um, personally, I think they're great. Grid case, uh, the fit is much better. They don't just sit there. And of course, the actual noise cancellation just makes the experience so much better. And of course, everything is controlled with the actual AirPods themselves. I'll see you guys in the next video.